Welcome, friends and enemies. In this video, I make this fancy apparatus to hold keychains. Stick around if you want to see how I did it. Let's just delve right in, shall we? The first thing I did for this project was use my foot to lift up a rather large piece of plywood onto my table saw, and then feel around underneath the plywood with my toes until the table saw was turned on. One can see from the look on my face that I was very proud of this feat that very few people have ever achieved. After cutting the plywood down to the size I wanted, I took some walnut from a previous project that I had scrapped and cut that down to one quarter inch strips to use as a sort of frame. In the carpentry trade, the phrase measure twice cut once literally means that one should double check one's measurements for accuracy before cutting a piece of wood. Otherwise, it may be necessary to cut again, wasting both time and material. In essence though, it means to plan and prepare thoroughly and carefully before taking action. I did not do this. Instead, I cut the miters for this frame significantly larger than they needed to be, and continued to slice off small portions until it fit perfectly. I didn't see the need to rush, because, as Mae West put it, anything worth doing is worth doing slowly. This doesn't just apply to the aspect of woodworking. <clears throat> Moving right along, I decided to add just a bit of a chamfered edge to the bottom of the inside of the frame. What this will do is just add a very, very subtle shadow line around the edge of the frame. I attempted to use a safety pin to spread the glue this time, and even though I felt very, very safe the whole time, I don't think I will ever do it again. It was very slow. Maybe there are some things in life that aren't better slow. Lucky for me, I had three more pieces that still needed to be glued, so the extensive experiments weren't over just yet. After securing the first piece with a bit of blue tape, I moved on to the second piece. For this one, I tried something that I had been thinking about and dreaming about for months, if not years. Using my forearm. Like most things that people daydream about, it didn't go exactly as expected. Rather than getting spread about, most of the glue just soaked into my skin. Even though the application was a letdown, I did find that peeling dried wood glue off of my forearms is an oddly satisfying experience. I'm not sure if you could find the same satisfaction peeling it off of someone else's forearms, but certainly my own was very delightful. For the third piece, I used a bit of chain, and this one was by far the best glue spreader I had used thus far in this project. I would give it a very solid 8 out of 10. It basically took one stroke to the side and then one stroke all the way back, and the job was done very, very adequately. After securing the third piece with even more blue tape, I moved on to the fourth and final piece. And for this one, I got a little bit more courageous and used a Forstner bit. This was a very nice 7 out of 10. And in case anyone is interested in getting one just like mine for this purpose, I believe that this was a one and a quarter inch diameter Royobi Forstner bit. Not the industry standard of Forstner bits by any means, but I found that it did the job quite well. While the glue on the frame was drying, I set my sights on making the signage to accompany the actual display. The first thing I did was print out a template and when that was done, I attached it with some surgical tape. I then drilled some holes for the E, the A, and the zero and from there, it was time to cut it out on the scroll saw. Enjoy some very soothing music while I cut this out. Now as I continue to cut out this on the scroll saw, allow me to educate you about the tool being used right now. This is a DeWalt scroll saw. DeWalt was started in the year 1923 by Raymond E. DeWalt, who was the inventor of the radial arm saw. The company was purchased by American Machine and Foundry Co. in the year 1949, only to be sold 11 years later to Black & Decker. 
1992, Black & Decker began to rebrand their power tools to DeWalt. The company continued to grow in the power tool industry, buying out Porter Cable in the year 2004. In 2011, DeWalt launched a line of contractors tools such as hammers, pliers, and tape measures. And, because it was a trend and just a bizarre publicity stunt, in April of 2016, DeWalt created a rugged Android-powered smartphone. It basically flopped. It was undoubtedly a rival to the line of cat smartphones, the first of which was released in 2013. And in my opinion, a phone made by a company specializing in heavy machinery for construction and mining is a lot cooler than a phone made by a company that sells battery-powered lawnmowers on Amazon for $3.99. One thing to note about DeWalt being started in the year 1923 is that they are coming up on their 100th anniversary. Will we get lawnmower discounts? Now that we've had our history lesson and I've cut out the words on the scroll saw, it's time to turn back to the frame once more. The first thing I did was remove the blue tape that was holding the pieces in place. After some basic sanding, it was time to fill the small gaps and cracks in the mitered corners. You know you are a real woodworking influencer when Starbond Glue decides to offer you free CA glue in exchange for a shout out of some sort. I am not a real woodworking influencer yet, so for now, I'm just using some Loctite super glue I found from a local store in my area called Walmart. I just put a bead of glue over the forbidden crack, then sanded it rather aggressively with my random orbital sander till the gap was gone. Some of you may have figured out by this point that I am a man of calculations, and that is precisely what I'm doing here. I just laid everything out on a frame to see how it would fit, and then proceeded to mark where everything would need to go. From there, I drilled out the holes that would later hold dowels. Alright, now this was an interesting and mostly unnecessary step that I probably would not do again if I were to make this for a second time. I attached the lettering to a larger board with a combination of blue tape and super glue. Basically a strange way of achieving the same result as double sided tape. How I long for some quality double sided tape. But then again, perhaps I do have some double sided tape. It just isn't shown in the videos. I used this tape method to hold down the small pieces while I carved and sanded them a bit for a bit more texture. In the end, I don't think it really achieved much, and I didn't enjoy it much either. Perhaps we can learn a lesson here about the results of fake double-sided tape. It did look cool once I took the tape off, though. With all the small parts sanded, it was time to glue the lettering onto the car. I basically just applied the sweet baby rays with my finger, then put it where it needed to be and let it sit for several hours. It is of some importance to note that I carried out some of the processes in this build in an interesting fashion. For example, you're about to watch me apply a finish, but in 40 seconds I will be gluing a stand onto the back and putting dowels in place. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this order, it's just odd. For the finish, I used some Minwax fast drying polyurethane. I have kind of been stuck in a rut of oil and wax finishes for some time now, and had forgotten how glorious a gloss layer finish can be. There are certainly times when it's not appropriate, but wow, it's good stuff! Here is the moment I alluded to a few moments before now. After applying the first coat of polyurethane, I flipped the frame over and glued these two plywood chunks to the back of it. I just cut a scrap of plywood on the table saw at a slight angle, and then cleaned up the other side of it with the scroll saw so that both pieces matched. This will allow the frame to stand up on its own without having to lean against a chair or, say, a rock. With those glued in place, I could apply a coat of polyurethane all over the back and sides. Now there is really only one thing missing from this project, something to actually hold the keychains. 
That's where this dowel comes in. But the dowel was slightly too large, so I put it in my drill and sanded it down so I'm like that. This is a technique that I've seen the legendary Drew Fisher implement on numerous occasions, and I always thought it looked really fun, and I finally had my chance to have a go at it. The dowel was then chopped to pieces, but not ripped to shreds. And then off camera, I applied a bit of oil and wax finish to them. And from there, I just inserted them into their assigned holes and the deal was done. After that, I just tested it to make sure this thing was strong enough to actually hold keychains without falling apart. And it was. I forgot to mention this in the actual outro, but until next time, go find some crocodiles. That's about it. Thanks for watching the entire build. I do have keychains available on my website starting at $5. I'll have it linked down below if you're interested in that. I'm going to do my very best to upload one video a week this fall. And of course, 10 in November. We'll see if I actually stick to that, but that is the goal. <clears throat> Since you made it to the very end of the video, now you get to enjoy almost a full minute of me making a fool of myself in front of the camera. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. My hand just touched the blade. Whoa! I should probably wear safety glasses. Whoa. Great start to married life. Really well done, Ryan. Try to maintain your composure, no nonsense. Okay.